we have the final law of induction with a negative sign, right? But the way I told you to use the Lenz's law would work only if the magnetic field were increasing or decreasing. That is, if there were a dB by dt term, right? But the flux, the magnetic flux, is equal to BA cos alpha or B dot A. So this flux can also change by the change of the area or the change of orientation, which would mean the change of the alpha, right? In, the, in those cases, magnetic field need not change. So let's take a case like that. Let's say I have a circuit like this, okay? With one of the limbs, one of the wires on the circuit, which is movable. So let's say those sides have a length of say some B, and this is some length, uh, let's say X, okay? Now what I'm doing is that I have placed this loop, the circuit in a magnetic field, a magnetic field which is into the plane like that, represented by that those crosses, okay? Now, I'm not changing the magnetic field at all. Magnetic field is not being changed. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold that end of the wire, that movable wire, and pull it that way. You know, what's happening? The magnetic field is not changing. The orientation of the loop or the wire is not changing, or, or the circuit is not changing, right? The orientation is not changing. What is changing though? The area. The area of the circuit or the loop which is exposed to the magnetic field. See, whenever we say that uh, the flux is BA cos theta, that A is not just the area of the loop, that is the area of the loop exposed to the magnetic field. Here, the area of the loop exposed to the magnetic field is increasing. And if the area is increasing, then the flux would increase. And if there is a change in flux, then there will be an induced current. Now the question is, how will we find the induced current? Okay. So there can be many ways. One way is uh, if we know the direction of the magnetic field, which we do, which is inside, right, into the plane, and I'm increasing the flux, it means that it is increasing the flux provided by the magnetic field, which is inside. So the current will get established in such a way that it favors the other direction, right, the direction which is outside the plane. So current will flow in that way, so as to oppose the the increase in the flux provided by the magnetic field which is into the plane. So it will provide an induced or it will have an induced current which is providing a mag or which is creating a magnetic field which is in the other direction. One way of looking at it. Another way could be uh, to go back to the basics of the Lenz's law which says that the, a current get induced in such a way that it opposes the cause of the change in the flux. And what is the cause of the change in the flux? The moving of that wire, right? So a current is supposed to get induced in such a way which opposes that motion. And what can oppose motion? Force, right? And this wire has no charge, so of, of course uh, uh, an electrical force can't act on it. And it is kept on a magnetic field and it has a current, it's supposed to have a current, right? So that current in a magnetic field will definitely feel a force. And the direction of the current would determine in which direction the force will, will be, right? So that is the direction of B. We know that. So I have to determine the direction of the current. And the loop is being pulled this way. So the loop itself would try to have a, a current which would apply a force in that direction. Because that force would oppose me, oppose the external agent which is trying to change the flux, right? And to have a force in that direction, yes, the current should be that way. Because if that is the direction of current, only then we will have a DL in that direction. And DL cross B will give you the direction of the force and that should be the direction of force it is trying to keep it pulled towards itself it is it is trying to oppose the pull which is cre created by the external agent there okay that's another way of looking at it a third way of finding in such a situation the direction of the induced current could be to go completely mathematical choose a direction of current like this that establishes a direction of the area vector once uh, the direction of the area vector is established, you can see the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field, which is, yes, that much. Now, write the value of flux, write how the area vector is changing. The area vector will basically, the area will basically be x times the b, right? And b is not changing. What is changing? Only x. So this d5 by dt will become, yes, only the dx by dt term would come out, okay? And negative of dx by dt will be this much. All right. So as we see that this comes out to be positive, what does that mean? It means that 
the direction which we had chosen initially was correct so this was a purely mathematical way of doing this so now in case the area changes we have three methods one is the original one where i to told you that a loop chooses a direction you can use that if that doesn't you know that doesn't strike you then you can go with the with the force being generated in the in the movable limb which opposes the motion which is being done in the other direction that is all that's the second way there's a second method you can use the third way could be yes to go completely mathematical and assume a direction of current and find whether the final answer which you are getting is positive or negative this a situation where there's a movable limb or uh, to be more precise wherever there's a relative motion between the conductor and the source of the magnetic field we call such a situation as motional emf for more videos and live lectures on the jee click on the subscribe button now